The major part of the sounds that we hear out of various equipment is reproduced by means of electric dynamic loudspeakers. It wasn't al always like that, though. When telephone first appeared, and up to the 1930s, the basic method of producing sound was the electromagnetic telephone, which was an inductance coil with a magnet core with a steel small membrane disc shortly over it. Affected by the alternate magnet field, the membrane oscillates, converting the alternate signal voltage into mechanical oscillations. This type of sound source, invented in the end of 1860s by Bell, along with the vast range of advantages, simplicity in use and high sensitivity, had several disadvantages, such as limited range of frequencies reproduced and the distortion of the signal. The reason for that is large weight and insufficient elasticity of the metal membrane of the electromagnetic telephone. In the end of 1920s, musical broadcasting was spreading all the wider. This brought on the need for a new sound reproducing device, that is the electric dynamic loudspeaker, also called dynamic. The patent for the first loudspeaker was given out in 1930 to Richard Fay and Herbert Dusty. They applied in 1922. This device, called the telephone receiver by the authors, was presented by a powerful electromagnet with a small coil inside coil slot connected to the large paper membrane. Let us remark the two advantages on the new construction. The signal was a lot less distorted and a lot louder compared to the standard electromagnetic telephone. Due to these advantages in the mid-1930s, the construction was already widely spread. And in 1940s, the constant magnet took place of the electromagnet. Until now, the electric dynamic loudspeaker is a basic device for reproducing sound, and the start of it all was the outer upgrade of the telephone receiver.